Hello and welcome to FML Fun My Life, a podcast brought to you by My Wall Street. Hi, I'm Marie. How are you? I'm good, Nicole. It's been a, another long week in the market with the market just tanking. So, you know, may as well talk about other topics. Yeah, exactly. We um, we have a very special interview for you guys today. We talked to Alex, who is an Irish NFT designer and kind of just, yeah, went into the basis of what an NFT is with her. And she also kind of explained um, how she kind of sees NFTs, if it's like an asset or if it's the artwork for her. She also talked a lot about the community aspect of the NFT world, which I actually found the most interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the community thing with NFTs is something I knew nothing about. I've been kind of doing mm -hmm. a bit of an NFT deep dive recently because I write about them sometimes in app. Mm -hmm. And that has meant that I lurk in Discord channels for certain types mm -hmm. of NFTs because I like want to know what's going on. I want to know what these people talk about. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it's just them having conversations about, you know, the artist that's producing the NFT or things that they're interested in, blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. one time I was actually on a Discord channel for a group of nfts that were called flower girls or something like that it's something like a bunch of celebrities were involved in anyway and they had a social channel on, on, in the discord and i clicked into that one evening when i was having a little stock and they were having a movie night we talk all the time about the metaverse and living online and web3 and all that stuff and it was crazy to see these people in some ways kind of were living online and they had mm -hmm. found a shared community. Their interest was NFTs and they were all watching a movie. Would you like to guess what movie they were watching? Oh, I have I have no idea. National Treasure. <laughs> I've had to be that. it. Had to, you've never seen National Treasure? No. <laughs> Is, should oh I? Oh my God. I think it's probably a really American movie because it centers around mm -hmm. Nicolas Cage stealing the Declaration of Independence. So like, that's uh, yeah, yeah. very American, but mm -hmm. it's worth it. It's it's kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean kind of style. Okay. Okay, I'll yeah. give it a watch. I'll give it a watch this yeah. weekend and let you all know what I think. <laughs> Perfect. Our um, next episode will actually be on National Treasure. That be the, If the market <laughs> is still down, we will do a 45-minute episode where we discuss nothing but National Treasure. Don't tell them that. They won't tune in. <laughs> <laughs> I would listen to that. <laughs> okay. Our next episode is not going to be about that. It's going to be really interesting. And we're actually thinking of doing a deeper dive into NFTs. Yes. Yeah, that, I investment. do actually. That will be quite interesting. From a pure investment standpoint. Um, but yeah, do, Amory, do you want to give like the listeners a literal definition of what an NFT is to like an yeah. outsider? Just before we hop in and hear um, Alex give a definition. And she did it really well because she's quite positioned in terms of the relationship between the art and the artist and, mm -hmm. and NFTs and how they benefit them. And I thought that was really worthwhile hearing. Um, but from just a purely technical standpoint, an NFT stands for non-fungible token. And they are a digital counterpart to maybe a trading card, a comic book, and even highbrow gallery art. Creators or brands produce digital pieces. These can be you know visual art, animations, video clips, tweets, anything really, uh, which they upload to marketplaces powered by the Ethereum blockchain for a small fee. Once that art is minted on the blockchain, it establishes an unalienable record detailing price ownership and transference this prevents the file from being digitally replicated even if an artist creates a visually identical piece they will have a dissimilar digital signature from a collector's point of view this eliminates the need for authenticators and protects owners from forgeries however an nft doesn't mean the image can't exist elsewhere on the internet or be shared it simply acknowledges that this is the original file and that all others are copies so me and Anne marie know very little about nfts so we're going to let an expert talk so Without further ado, here is the interview with Alex, and we hope you enjoy. Hello, and welcome to FML Fund My Life. We have a very special interview today with Alex, who is an NFT designer from Ireland. I actually met um, Alex, when I was wor remote working in the Canary Islands. So hi, Alex, you're very welcome. Hi, how are you? And of course, today with me also is my lovely co-host, Anne-Marie. How are you, Anne-Marie? I'm good. I like how you just subtly bragged that you lived in the Canary Islands. That was nice. <laughs> always. I love, I love getting that in somewhere. Yeah, you, know? you always have to plug it. You always have to be like, do you know who remote works? Me. Do you know where I am? A hot country. You know where I'm not? Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Alex is actually in Barcelona as well, so Amory, you're the odd one out here. Yeah, fair enough. 
So we're going to just dive into the first question, Alex. Um, so for FML listeners who have no idea what an NFT is, can you explain briefly what it is and how you became aware of them in the first place? Yeah, so um, an NFT is like a digital token. Um, and basically it represents real world items. So that could be a piece of art, a piece of music. Um, it could be uh, in-game items. So uh, weapons for uh, items in video games. Um, and it could be a video. So that's basically what an NFT is. Mm-hmm. I understand that maybe that's a little bit hard to understand. So I actually asked some of my Twitter followers just to give like some more, more explanations. So I'll just say okay. one or two as well. So um, Joby PSD said it's selling paintings for magic internet money. <laughs> <laughs> and News NFT said an NFT is a chunk of digital data that records who a piece of digital artwork belongs to. Mm-hmm. So um, basically, yeah, it's a token that um, it records like a signature. So it records my signature as an artist. And so people know it's authentic, it's by me. And then the person who buys it, it records that they have bought it. They own it. So they have an ownership over this piece. Cool. Well, you mentioned there that you're kind of the artist, you're responsible for designing the artwork mm-hmm. for these NFTs. So I'm wondering how did you end up getting into designing NFTs and were you an artist previously? Were you working in graphic design kind of before this? Um yeah, so I I was a graphic designer before and I actually studied graphic design in Ireland. And um, I had been doing that for a couple of years, just freelance, I was doing commissions work. And then I actually, I went to the Canary Islands to remote work, <laughs> yeah. where I was told. And um, I remember seeing online all this stuff about NFTs. And I had actually, like a few months earlier, looked into it. I watched a video and kind of forgotten about it. I was really interested, but it seemed so complex at the time. And then what happened was um, when I was in... Mary's, it kind of started building popularity and I felt like, okay, maybe I should try this thing. So um, I looked up some videos on YouTube. Um, there was one artist called Ferocious and he was um, or yeah, he was a 17 year old artist and um, just really inspiring um, how he was just making paintings in his room and then he like sold them for hundreds of thousands and really made a name for himself. So that really inspired me and that's really where I, I wanted to get into nfts um and because i had already been making my own like more artistic pieces on the side of my commission work i kind of thought okay well this is a chance for me to actually be able to make my own work and represent myself and my feelings um through artwork so i said okay i i'll i can now sell like my pieces and i'm like yeah i like to create so that's how i got into like creating nfts um and designing nfts yeah and I think um I think it would be it's interesting that the whole anonymous part of NFT. So if you're watching this podcast over on my Wall Street's YouTube account, you'll notice that you're kind of covering your identity. Can you yeah. kind of explain why that is and why it's kind of a part of NFT yeah. world? So basically, um, because NFTs are all digital, it's kind of like a new realm for people. Um, and you can be whoever you want to be. So a lot of people, this is why a lot of people buy um you know, you see a lot of people buying avatars or, you know, like people will say monkey JPEGs or whatever um, to represent themselves. So an NFT is kind of a way to represent yourself. And then it doesn't matter what gender or race or anything like that. You are you can be who you want um, without being judged. And you're more likely to be judged on your merit, what you do for your community, um, like who you are, like if you're a kind person. So I think for a lot of people, that's really freeing that they feel they don't have like that societal pressure of like people yeah. already seeing you and say, like, well, that's, you know, that's a man or a woman or, you know, and immediately making a bias, like, you, you know, so you kind of escape that and be who you want to be. So yeah. it's great in that way. And I think that's why a lot of people love NFTs and like this kind of digital world is that, yeah, you feel like you can truly be yourself yeah. um, and not be judged. That's really cool. Yeah, and that makes sense actually because I see a lot of um, NFT designers and um, they have their you know profile picture as their artwork, but I suppose it's also as well to hide their identity, which is cool. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of people, you know, one of the biggest projects is Board Apes. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people own Board Apes, and no one really knows who they are, but mm. they're part of like 
community, like the NFT community, the Born Ape community. Um, they've made friends that way. They build communities. And yeah, it's just all on their merits. So we don't know who could be behind that. You know, if it's mm -hmm. from India or Japan or America. Um, but yeah, we, it's great because yeah, you don't judge people then. You can just um, see what they're really like. Yeah. Another great thing about your work is that like, I read actually something that there's not a lot of women um, NFT designers. So it's quite mm -hmm. rare that you're a woman and an Irish one as well. Because I don't think <laughs> yeah. it's, it's quite new to Ireland, I believe. So like, what do you think has been your biggest success since starting your NFT design and journey? Um, I think success wise, I mean, when I started, I remember my first piece I sold for around like $200. Mm -hmm. And like at the time I thought like that was amazing. But yeah. I think my, my highest sale to date has been around like three thousand dollars wow um so that was like a big achievement for me because it was actually one of the currencies that are used by um nfts it's all about using cryptocurrencies like digital mm -hmm. currency um which you can buy using regular money you basically just buy it through a wallet um so yeah it had been one ethereum had been around three thousand dollars at that stage so that was like a big milestone for me like okay like can i make for my work so that was a big accomplishment for me yeah and um, also just getting like recognition from people outside of um like my regular community like i was followed by paris hilton and i had my work shared by her and some other people so cool. yeah so for me like that was really cool um, and it was cool to see like people seeing my work um uh, you know who were like known figures and stuff you know what i mean so mm -hmm. that was like, definitely something big for me as well yeah, yeah. i mean I was fangirling when you said Paris Hilton followed you. <laughs> Tell us. I was like, that's so cool. <laughs> I would be interested to hear you maybe briefly talk about the benefits of creating art on the blockchain, maybe in comparison to the way that you created art previously. I know that there's mm -hmm. um, a, an ability for you to make money off of subsequent sales. So say, you know, that initial piece is sold for $200. Maybe in the future, you know, a reseller is going to sell that for $100,000. You will actually be able to make money from that or maybe even talk about the guarantees of authenticity that come along with NFTs. Yes. So yeah, one of the biggest thing I think for artists, especially independent artists, is that you can make royalties off your artwork like quite easily. So I can set up any royalty amount that I want on my NFT. Like it could be, you know, 90%, it could be 50%, um, but usually people do 10%. Mm -hmm. So if my work sells then on the secondary market, I'll get 10% of that, which is really great as like a passive income. Mm -hmm. And I know nowadays a lot of people look for like passive income, income streams. It's going to be hard to find. And um, yeah, it's just nice sometimes when you wake up and you have an email like, oh, your piece sold on the secondary market and you have that mm -hmm. extra money. Um, that's really one of the big benefits of doing NFTs. Um, another benefit is a certificate of authenticity. So, in the traditional art world, there's always like scandals because people will, you know, find out that a famous piece it was fake the whole time, um, or they find it really hard to trace back if like something was made by an artist or their students, you know, at the Renaissance period. So it can be really hard to authenticate like if it's real or not. Um, and basically, with NFTs, you have the actual artist saying, "This is by me." Uh, it's my name is attached, um, my wallet address is attached. So if you buy this, like you're buying from me, and um, that will be on the blockchain forever. So basically, in the future, if anyone checks, you know, in 200 years, they'll know, okay, that was Alex who uh, put that piece up, and it's really by her, you know? Um, so that's definitely two of the big advantages um, and benefits of NFTs. Cool. And that's great actually that passive income is so important it's actually such yeah. a big plus I'm gonna start uh, getting my drawing pad out so I can become <laughs> yeah, yeah. a designer maybe like I'm useless at it but like oh my god that like that extra income is so cool but Nicole um, your your passive income is your investments <laughs> oh of course yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah I meant to say that yeah yeah of course yeah they go um, plug the company <laughs> yeah <laughs> I met another one. I met another one. Sorry. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I know, Alex, that you also invest in other designers' NFTs. So can you tell us a bit about that process? How do you pick them? And yeah. then also, what are you looking for in an NFT? Um, for its, uh, Is it around its artwork or the artist or the NF community? What things do you look out for when you buy an NFT? So me personally, I think there's a couple of things I look for. I definitely look for... Um, 
uh, maybe an artist that I've known before or an artist who has a good track record, like maybe they've already sold uh, some of their own pieces that weren't in the collection. Um, and yeah, maybe they have a community around them. Like that would definitely be something big for me that I would definitely research the artist um, or just like what they've been doing for the community. That would definitely be a big, big thing. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's important is just to pick something that you like um, because everyone wants to pick something that they think is going to make money. Uh, but if you only have limited resources, like if you have 3,000 and you're going to spend it on something, um, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Things can go up, they can go down. And, and I think you would rather have something you like um, if it goes down instead of having yeah. something you don't like if it goes down, you know? So it's definitely important to pick something that you actually connect with, a piece of artwork that you really enjoy. Um, I definitely think that's super important. And an artist that you connect with as well and that you really believe in, I think is really important. Um, of course, there is like uh, artists who have previous projects that are already successful. That's like a lot easier because then you know, okay, like this person was successful before. If I make an investment in them, like I uh, uh, less risk. Um, for example, one person who I invested in was Betty White and she has a collection called Dead Fellas. Um, she's actually a female creator and a mother and she says like NFTs changed her life, she's really inspiring. So that drew me to her project um, and she had a second project called Dead Friends and basically I bought one of these Dead Friends I think for 0.15 ETH which maybe was around $300-ish and then I think I sold it for uh, $1,800 later on a couple of weeks later so that was like a, one of my best investments i guess but um yeah i already knew that because i had been following her i already knew like she was legit i thought she was a cool person i enjoyed the art and yeah that made me make a good decision rather than just okay this is what everyone else is buying like mm -hmm. just wait chill out and be in the community for a while and see what you like I think that's really important to not just like buy head first, take some time to research. Mm -hmm. You talked there about buying and selling NFTs. So I'm wondering, do you consider yourself an NFT trader? I don't know if that's the correct terminology. Like, do you buy and sell frequently? And is it kind of something that you do in order to make a profit? Or maybe you you know want to free up capital to buy another NFT you become interested in? What's kind of your decision making there? So I definitely would say I'm an artist first um, and maybe a trader second. But... I don't do as much trading anymore. I try to focus on selling my own um, artworks, but definitely I, because I've been here for a while, I have experienced trading. So I've had like gains and I've had losses. Um, and I have that experience under my belt, but now uh, unless I know it's a really good deal, I'm not going to go for it. <laughs> yeah. So I still do it. Um, but yeah, I just try to focus on myself. And because like, yeah, like I said, I know um, the community now, like when Betty had that, project out I knew okay like I know I should invest in this um I know it's going to be a good trade so yeah I definitely think trading is secondary for me I know for some people like they're solely traders um and they just trade in the NFT space and then there's people who are solely artists and they just sell their work um, and there's also collectors who so only buy from independent artists who don't don't buy it to trade they buy it just they love the artwork Mm -hmm. um, and if they make a profit, great, but they're really just passionate about art. So, yeah, there's definitely two sides, I think. Like, there's definitely more of a trading side and more of an art side. And they don't always ne necessarily correlate. You know, some people who trade would never buy it for the art, you know, mm -hmm. and some people who buy it for the art would never trade. So, yeah, there's yeah. definitely two different groups within NFTs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've kind of answered my next question there, but I was just going to ask, like, do you think of NFTs first as a piece of art or as an asset? But it seems you lean more towards the art side of things. Yeah, I think, you know, like in a general sense, like if someone said an NFT, like I think of it as the the token, you know, um, and I think of it as, yeah, like a digital asset. Um, I just use it to make paintings. Like I use it to... Um, put up my paintings and to sell my paintings. But yeah, I definitely think it's actually more of a digital token. And that's more of what an NFT is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So speaking of assets, mm -hmm. I think our FML listeners might be interested. Do you invest in stocks or any other traditional assets? 
Um, I actually don't. <laughs> um, I have intended and I would like to get into it. I think that I do at the moment just try to trade within NFTs and within crypto. Like I do own a lot of different cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, that's where I'm kind of putting my additional income. Um, but in the, in the future, I probably would try out stocks, I guess. For me, um, you can make a lot of gains with cryptocurrency right now, um, but it's very risky. And then traditional stocks are definitely way safer. So they both have pro pros and cons. Even though traditional stocks are slower, it is worth it um, if you want more security and play the long game, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it makes sense because you already in that community, you know so much about it, you have that knowledge. So yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Exactly. You focus on one. You're focusing on one thing, which is exactly um, yeah. Like yeah. like I said, I do think traditional stocks are like are great as well. I would like to do it in the future. Just for right now, I'm trying to just focus on one thing. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's a lot of benefits to traditional stocks as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, not to put a put a damper on things, but maybe in a, a hypothetical. If the NFT market were to end tomorrow, I don't know how that would happen. I, I assume like all servers in the world would have to go offline or something. Um, do you would you do you see this blockchain technology going on to be used in other ways, like the idea of um, you know it preventing like fraud and, and that sort of thing? Yeah, I definitely think it, it will. Um, I think like no matter what happens, like it, it will keep going on. I think a lot of people think like oh you know like NFTs are bubble. Mm -hmm. Or this blockchain technology is like a bubble and it's going to burst and it's just going to go away. But from my experience, like before I was in NFTs, I thought the same thing. This is just a fad and it's probably going to go away. And then once I joined, I realized, oh, actually, there are so many people who are really passionate about this, who really believe in the technology, um, developers and software engineers and, you know, people who have been working in like industries for a long time. And they're working really hard on it. Um, and they definitely believe that it can be used in a lot of different ways. We even see like Mark Zuckerberg changing Facebook to Meta, like the company name, which is like a huge representation of like this digital identity that people are kind of yearning for. Um, especially in modern day, I think there's less privacy. I yeah. think you can go out on the street, anyone can record you or anyone can, yeah, like anyone, anyone can do what they want. Um, with your image. Um, I think people um, feel like nowadays like there's a lack of privacy and this digital world gives you that privacy again. This blockchain technology gives you that privacy again. And yeah, I think that's basically why I think it will keep on going on. And then also there's a lot of people who want to, you know, um, use blockchain, oh, sorry, excuse me, blockchain technology in different ways. They want to use it to, you know, okay, instead of buying a house traditional way, a blockchain contract and we can buy it that way so i definitely think people want to kind of go into that instead and they have all these ideas and it's so new it'll take some time but yeah i think even if the market like kind of um changes like like even in traditional stocks the market changes and sometimes it's bad sometimes it's good even if the market's really bad like it's, it's always i think you might go back <laughs> yeah. yeah that kind of feeds into um, my next question, and maybe a wrap-up question to bring it back mm -hmm. to the kind of investment perspective for our listeners. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering, do you think the current NFT market, which seems to be in quite a hype cycle at the minute, is sustainable? And maybe where do you see it going in the future? So I think, is it sustainable? Like, I definitely have questioned that myself a few times. Like, is it sustainable? I think what people don't realize is NFTs actually follows um, cryptocurrency a lot. So if something happens with, for example, Ethereum, something will happen with NFTs. And um, if Ethereum is too high, people will buy less NFTs um, because they're trying to invest in Ethereum right now because it's going so high. If Ethereum is too low, people won't invest in NFTs either because they're probably going to wait for it to go up a little bit. So really the best time to invest in NFTs is when it's in the middle, between like two and three thousand dollars. Um, I think it's the best time for people to invest. Um, and I think um, cryptocurrency goes through cycles every couple of years where it will like go very low or go very high. Um, and for that reason, that will probably affect NFTs as well. So I do think um, right now, like there's so much money going into it, like probably isn't sustainable right now for like the long run. 
But I do think, yeah, as it goes in cycles, it will come back. So, you know, every three or four years, it's probably a new cycle. And um, so even if you buy something now and it loses its value, you can still hold on to that for the next few years. And the cycle will probably repeat itself then and it will be worth more then. And it will also have a more historical value because it's older. Mm-hmm. So, you know, NFTs have only begun really in 2017, 2018. So if you own an NFT from back then, it's worth a lot of money because it was like the beginning. Mm-hmm. And like right now, um, like in five years, if another cycle began, um, and you own an NFT from right now, that that would be worth a lot because it's like, okay, you bought this NFT in 2021 and in 2022, and now it's 2025. And, you know, this is the first five to 10 years of NFTs. Like in yeah. years, how much is that going to be worth? So I definitely think people need to think about that, like the long term, rather than right now, like, you know, if the bubble's going to pop, you know what I mean? I think people sometimes just think about, yeah, like, is it sustainable right now? There's a lot of money going in. Um, like I said, I think traditional markets have this as well, where things go up. Yeah. If it wasn't sustainable, it kind of drops, and then it slowly builds again. Um, so yeah, I think people should think about it in that sense, rather than, you know, oh, it's just going to completely go away, and everything is going to go to zero. I think people think about that a lot, um, and focus on that, and, and, you know, you have a fear of that, um, mm. where I just try to think into the next cycles, and a lot of other traders as well that I follow and that I listen to and um, who've been cryptocurrency for years, they think in that way as well. They don't think of like right now, they think of the next cycle, the cycle after that. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's um a smart approach about like not seeing it as that and even the way you value the art first, not mm-hmm. as yeah. the, not as the asset first. So you're actually doing it because you're a designer and you have passion passion for yeah. art mm-hmm. and you value that creators are actually getting, you know, the value for what their work now. Things yeah. can't be like copied and you get like recognition so that's really cool yeah. so I think, um oh sorry i don't want to interrupt um, <laughs> yeah no go ahead no go ahead i think like people they think of nfts and they think okay like yeah they think of it in this time and that it's going to go away but i think mm-hmm. a lot of people in nfts don't think of it that way they think of you know people like andrew warhol and um, who just had a huge sale the other day um for one of his most iconic like, pieces like 195 million wow. people think about it like that like you know like years and years later like this is an artist's artwork and it's going to gain value like all the mm-hmm. traditional worlds mm-hmm. so people definitely think about it like that where i think a lot of people on the outside just think of it as you know oh these are just these pictures um, mm-hmm. yeah. But, yeah people think about it as an actual uh, like like the traditional art world just yeah yeah, I, I was I was wondering if like maybe you see like an art history of, of NFTs emerging. Like we would have artists you'd be like, oh, this was the high renaissance of of NFT creators. You know, th- these were the high end because sometimes you go on like um, you see ridiculous accounts of an NFT that sells and it's like one line on a white sheet because someone was just trying out like, oh, how do I make an NFT? I wonder how to do that. Um, so do you see kind of the cream rising to the top in the NFT market where there will be like widely acknowledged artists? Yeah, I definitely do. And I think, especially right now, I think, like, I'm seeing that. I see so many incredible artists coming around 2017 and 2018. There is projects from that time. For example, CryptoPunks was the first mm-hmm. big collectible project. Um, and that has a historical value because of that. Like, everyone says, okay, like, that's part of the history. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I started in March last year, like, uh, like there was another few artists that I thought were incredible. Um, but most of it I thought, yeah, it's okay, you know what I mean? Like, it's fine, the artwork. Um, but now I think like there's people who are joining NFTs that I actually followed for years before that I followed like on Instagram, on social media, YouTube, and I really looked up to, for example, and um, one of them is called Rick Lee. He has been around for a long time and he joined NFTs only a small few months ago. And I was messaging him, I was like, oh my gosh, like, it's great to see you here. And um, you know, it's just amazing to have this person and to be able to talk to them and communicate with them because before I, I would never have done that because they were so beyond me and like so big. Um, so yeah, I definitely see the artists joining now who have already been around for like 10 plus years. Their artwork is incredible. They have so, all these skills behind them. And uh, yeah, you see like a really good quality of artwork now mm-hmm. uh, compared to even one year ago. Mm-hmm. So um, there's more competition in the market as well because of that like amazing um artwork and i also think as well a lot of people they just see on the news you know board apes and they look at that and say okay um 
like like you know maybe people don't like that art style and they prefer a different art style so they say this looks like a cartoon and i'm not really into that um and because of that like yeah they just discredit it completely but if you go onto sites like for example super rare is one of the biggest nft platforms and also foundation you will see a lot of artists who just make a one piece and um, who are just regular artists who have incredible work and that's where you really see lives being changed and where you really see you know these smaller independent artists and like the, the real communities is where that's where you really see that instead of looking at the big huge projects you know yeah. what i mean um, that get all the attention i think it's good to look at these smaller uh yeah smaller artists and smaller projects yeah so if any of our listeners kind of want to learn more about nfts i know you have a few accounts that can um yeah, really. kind of they should follow or they should like they'll, they'll be able to kind of learn more about the whole process or even get inspiration yeah so um i have a few names here yeah so on twitter you can find real Cato og um real Cato, so it's k-a-t-o and then og um and well his name is Cato. he's a really great person and he's always sharing a lot of artworks from independent artists so it's a great way to find smaller artists who are up and coming um, another person is Guy Norcal, so G Y N O R C A L. It stands for Guy North California, uh, and he is also a great person for in, uh, investing in smaller artists, uh, sharing a lot of amazing artworks. Um, he's really into actual photography, so you'll see a lot of photography works being shared and bought by him. And then one of the biggest collectives in our community is Kryptonish. So it's C R Y P T I N I S H, and he is actually a huge collector in our community. Um, I think on Foundation alone, he spent more than two million on uh, independent artists, and has one of the biggest NFT collections. And he's super down to earth. You can join Twitter and message him, and he'll write back to you. And wow. all the people here on this list will write back to you. And and if you tweet on their tweets and interact with them, they'll interact back. So, um, yeah, great people to talk to um, and definitely people I recommend to follow if you want to um, get into NFTs or you're thinking about investing. Yeah, great. Well, we'll link all of them in the description below and also Alex's Twitter so you can follow along on her journey. But so that's a really a wrap for this episode. Thank you so much, Alex, for coming on yeah. and teaching us all about NFTs. Yeah, no problem. And if anyone ever wants to um, message me on Twitter, um, I will write back and um, I will write back all the comments. I also have some threads on marketing and NFTs, how to market, um, and I can share those with you as well if anybody ever wants some help from the same thing of investing. Amazing. Awesome. Thanks so much again. Thank you Thanks. so much. <laughs> so that's a wrap for the interview. We really hope you enjoyed it. It was great, wasn't it, Emery? Yeah, I, I learned a lot. It's always uh, interesting to hear things from other people's perspectives. Mm. So if you would like to give us a follow on our socials, you can find us on Instagram at Fun My Life Podcast, on Twitter at My Wall Street HQ, and on TikTok at My Street. And finally, if you're ready to start your investing journey and looking for resources, check out My Wall Street's Getting Started podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts or download the My Wall Street Learn app. Both are linked below. Thank you and see you next time.